Paul, it's been a good week for you over time, hasn't it? Hectic, very hectic and very pleasing. Yeah, but uh, the pleasing part obviously overrules the hecticness, doesn't it? Yeah, well obviously, you know, with a traumatic Sunday when we were down nine men and the other night as well, played a difficult opposition in their place. And the boys have come through un unscathed as well, which is a, a first for us. Mm. And it shows you the character in the team, I mean, to win with nine men, as you say, especially, uh, and then go on and, and, and beat a higher league opponent as well. I mean, it must be a, a big boost for the club, big lift. Well, you know, obviously, Steenage didn't play on, in midweek, so, mm. you know, we're trying to rest their players now, get it off their legs. We've done enough on the training ground now if they haven't learned by now, so... Mm. Hopefully, you know, that we give them yesterday off and we rest, rested them today, regen them today, do a bit of work tomorrow and then it's a big tussle for us Saturday. Yeah, and how's Ben Toza feeling? Uh, well, he's now played on grass. He had four, four train sessions on AstroTurf. Yeah, he's now tasted grass and I thought he did very well. He's stiff and sore, but they all are. Mm. But uh, obviously with having very few training sessions, Ben's feeling a wee bit worse for me, but we'll be there on Saturday. Yeah, you said obviously before that <coughs> you need to be careful with players coming back from injury, but needs must sometimes as well, don't they? It's a catch-22, you know, if we don't keep training them, we don't get any fitter. Then they also, if we don't keep training them, just play them. They start to pick up other niggling injuries, which we can't afford. E.g., we maybe, maybe played Lairdy a bit quick and Dicko a bit quick, you know, one's, one's out this minute in time, the other one is... Having these aches and pains. Yeah, which is obviously you know you, you need all your players, don't you, at any time of the season. So, um, when you always said when you start getting your players back, the results will turn. And the last couple of games have you shown some promise as well. Yeah, uh, ex experience. There's no substitute for experience, youth, and exuberance and fitness. And you know, you know, it's it's something that we, we, you all have used to the, the best of their ability over the years. But there's no, ex no substitute for a, an experienced 300, 400, 500 game mm. Div 2 player, you know what I mean? He's d done it, seen it, got the t-shirt. We didn't have too many of them at the start of the season. We were firing on uh, youthful exuberance, which can neither be good, bad or indifferent. And we were good, bad or indifferent. You know, but uh, to be fair to them lately, they've... I think all that work we've done in the start to, start to fit in the jigsaw puzzle in their in their brain. Yeah. And they're all starting to appreciate that if they do to the letter of the law, what we ask them shape wise, when the other team has the ball and when we have the ball, we become a dangerous unit, you know, and we can win football games. Yeah. Well, are the squad okay other than uh, the, 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 the injured players that we already knew about, uh, two games so close together. Did you pick up any fresh niggles? Disappointment is obviously George Thomas and Sheen with an international duty. Mm. <coughs> it's a big blow, you know. Well, it's nothing we could we could prevent. It would be nice to have that added strength and freshness as well, but it's not going to be there. So we soldier on with the, the boys from the other day there. Uh, Dicko should be okay for the for the, the game as well. So. You know, it gives us uh, an extra couple of bodies to come in. Yeah, and Stevenage, a word on them, they haven't got the best away from her, they haven't won away from home, so does that play into your hands, does that put extra pressure on you? It's going to be a very difficult game against two teams that are desperate for three points. Uh, I don't I don't envision it being a classic. I'm saying that I think it'll be, you know, it'll be nip and tuck right through, it'll be a tight game and hopefully we'll come out the right side of it. Yeah, and home advantage is going to be key in, in close games, you'd like to think. Yeah, I'd like to hope, I'd like to hope so. And, and taking confidence in the last two games. You have to remember, they haven't done, had a game midweek and they won 3 nothing in ASG, which is a huge bonus to them. So they're coming buoyed and confident, as confident as we are. Yeah, yeah, and, and pulling them back <coughs> close to you in a table, they're not far above you, are they? So no, that's the, another... The name of the game now is, we've got two cup, cup competitions to keep progressing and if we can... And now we've got to start climbing the table. Yeah, and, and how do you how do you assess the, the form in terms of the cup games, transforming it into the league? I mean, it, well, it sounds easy, doesn't it? that's the problem, you know, a non-league team and a Div 1 team. We haven't played our bread and butter teams yet. I'd like to see us play, play, beat our bread and butter team. You know, somebody that, you know, is a Div 2 team and plays the Div 2 way. Mm. You know, so far we've played two passing teams, really, because... Of, 
it still had to be passing because of the surface they, they played on. You know, and obviously Gillingham were a nice football team as well. They've done very well uh, as well. But I like to see somebody playing, you know, a bit more forward thinking. And, but I'm very confident the players have appreciated, you know, what we've done over the last two games defensively and attack wise the other night. And we'll, I'm very confident we'll take that into the game. Bill up, Paul, thank you very much. Cheers. Um, Chris Will filled in on Tuesday, Paul, because of Kujak's suspension, but he'll be back for the weekend. Is it, is it nice to have the option of those two experienced goalkeepers for you? Well, I'm a great believer in uh, people keeping the jerseys when, when you win. <coughs> I see no, see no point in you know, all of a sudden changing again for the sake of it. I do feel we really did well the other night there. And he will get the, uh, you know, I'll, have a, I'll, I'll deliver it over the next couple of days. You know, I'm not totally writing it off that I wouldn't change the goalkeeper, but, you know, at this minute in time, I'm swaying on really who's done no wrong. Well, I suppose, yeah, when you, as you say, you know, across the pitch, when you've got a winning team, confidence is there and it's it's good to keep that, you know, that momentum going. Yeah, that's right. I'm saying I, I'm not saying I won't make a change or two, but... Uh, a freshness maybe, but as far as it goes, uh, it'll be very much on the lines.